Now, going back to those visual hallucinations, they are typically hierarchical. So firstly, the patient will say to you, I perceive something out of the corner of my vision. I often look around, there's no one there. They will then go on to see insects, uh, often spiders. Then they'll start seeing animals, so patients will twitch the curtains. They always do it when the sun goes down, and they twitch curtains and they say to the wife or the spouse that there's a cat at the bottom of the garden or, you know, what's the neighbor's dog doing there? And uh, the spouse can never see them. And then it goes on to seeing people, and the people are often loved ones, often dead relatives. Um, sometimes they're strangers. Sometimes people don't mind actually having their dead husband back. Um, sometimes they do. Now, uh, sometimes the visions will speak to the patient. More often, they don't. Um, and sometimes there is a delusional persecutory flavor to the things that the visions say, but most often there isn't. And it is one of the things that helps differentiate DLB from the hallucinosis that one might see, for instance, in front of temporal dementia, where persecution is, is a more common theme. And it can be very difficult with the grey cases who don't have the hallucinations to differentiate it from Alzheimer's. Uh, and if the progression is very rapid over a year, which it certainly can be in DLB, there's a difficulty with uh, differentiating it from Croatia Jakob, where Parkinsonian features are relatively common. The fluctuating level of consciousness, which is one of the core criteria of McKeith and colleagues, is very useful, and patients with DLB uh, can become profoundly unrousable, uh, such that their family members think they're dead and they, you know, shake them. Uh, and that, that's something that you'll hear quite commonly. Now, it's in these grey cases that FP6 scanning is particularly important. So that's DAT scan, which is the commercially available scan for helping you with a Parkinson's diagnosis. And it can be a real lifesaver in these conditions. Now, there is a differential for DLB, you might actually have a patient who's got Alzheimer's, their Parkinsonism can be secondary to Alzheimer's, or they might have Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Not as foolish as it sounds, and I'll explain why in due course. You might have a frontotemporal dementia, uh, where Parkinsonism is a common theme. Uh, for instance, progressive supranuclear palsy, you might say, well, that's easy because they've got a down gaze problem. But remember, type P, which is the Parkinsonian type, they don't have a gaze problem. They just have Parkinsonism and frontotemporal dementia. In terms of the memory impairment, uh, for those of you who do your own neuropsychometry, uh, it, there's a very frontal flavor, uh, and there's visuospatial impairment, as you would expect from a condition that affects the back of the brain predominantly. And if you're trying to differentiate from Alzheimer's in general, there are less language, semantic or expressive problems and less praxis errors than in Alzheimer's. In terms of differentiating DLB from <coughs> Parkinson's disease dementia, DLB patients perform more poorly in frontal lobe tasks, trail making, stroop in this particular study, and their visual recognition memory is not so good. So DLB in a sense is more of an exaggeration of PDD in that the, the front of the brain and the visual cortices are even more uh, affected. Now, I, I did talk about people who have Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and said it's not as stupid as it sounds, and we are seeing large volumes of those patients now. And the reason is to do really with the fundamental biology of these proteins. They appear to like each other, so they stick to each other. So if you've got a brain full of A beta, it tends to like to co-deposit tau and co-deposit some nuclear. Uh, and this was shown in this very elegant study um, from Trojanowski and colleagues, where they, they took a triple transgenic mouse. Now, this is a poor mouse who has two copies of an APP gene. So that mouse alone would get Alzheimer's. They've thrown in a tau gene, so now the mouse is really going to get Alzheimer's. And now they've crossed it with a synuclein mouse who is destined to get Parkinson's. So the progeny have two APP, one tau, and one synuclein gene. It's a real mess. Now, the interesting thing is that if you throw a synuclein gene into this mix, you get a massive increase in amyloidosis in A-beta deposition. 
All right. So having Parkinson's is a risk factor for having Alzheimer's in these mice. Having Alzheimer's is a risk factor for having Parkinson's in this mice. And I would say to you the same is true clinically out there. And it is more than just statistical coincidence. Okay. The core criteria for making a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease dementia very much easier. You have to have Parkinson's to start with, okay? And you have to have a dementia syndrome, and then you can define that dementia syndrome in any which way you want. So that's fairly easy. And I've already told you that is, it is the normal progression of Parkinson's in most cases. Now, I've ex I said except for tremor dominant types, there is a difference in Parkinson's disease <coughs> subtypes, those who are very tremulous. Uh, appear to be really, relatively protected from getting dementia. Those who have the postural instability gait disorder variant, very akinetic and rigid, tend to be particularly at risk. Uh, being male is a risk. Having MCI is obviously uh, a risk. Um, and as I said, because PDD occurs in a background of Parkinson's disease, that is not really going to cause you much difficulty in diagnostic. The differential exactly the same as I've gone through for DLB. So making the diagnosis in DLB, if you have two of these core criteria, your home and dry, visual hallucinations plus fluctuating cognition, with dementia obviously, which is a central criteria, that's enough, or visual hallucinations plus Parkinsonism, or Parkinsonism plus fluctuating cognition. I've told you the difficulty is when you have dementia and you don't have any of the rest.